the cell, the basic unit of life in all organisms, has several organelles embedded in its cytoplasm. These organelles are surrounded by a thin membrane called the plasma membrane, which not only separates the extracellular environment from the cytoplasm, but also gives shape to the cell. Before the advent of the electron microscope, scientists conducted chemical studies on the cell membrane and deduced that it is composed of lipids that mainly consist of phosphoglycerides. These lipids are arranged in a bilayer with the polar hydrophilic head of both layers pointing outward towards the aqueous environment and the nonpolar hydrophobic tail made of saturated hydrocarbons pointing inward. Such an arrangement not only protects the tail from the aqueous environment, it also prevents polar molecules such as nucleic acids, proteins and ions from diffusing through it. Later, biochemical investigations revealed that apart from lipids, proteins and carbohydrates too are a part of the cell membrane. Moreover, the proteins are arranged in two forms, peripheral and intrinsic. Peripheral proteins lie on the surface of the membrane and can be easily removed by physical methods. On the other hand, Intrinsic proteins are totally or partially embedded in the bilayer and can be removed only after disrupting the entire membrane. Scientists also deduced that the ratio of proteins to lipids varies greatly between different types of cells. For instance, the cell membrane of red blood cells is 52% proteins and 40% lipids. The advent of the electron microscope helped scientists better understand the structure of the cell membrane and finally in 1972, Singer and Nicholson put forth the fluid mosaic model which was widely accepted by the scientific community. This model stated that lipids are found in the form of a fluid bilayer. This quasi-fluid of almost fluid-like nature allows proteins to move laterally within the bilayer and this ability of the membrane to allow the movement of molecules within it is referred to as membrane fluidity. The fluid nature of the membrane also allows the cell to perform important functions such as cell growth, the formation of intercellular junctions, secretion and cell division. All these functions require flexibility in the membrane. For instance, during cell growth and cell division, the membrane has to extend. The cell membrane also guards the entry and exit of different molecules and ions in and out of the cell. However, the cell membrane is selectively permeable, which means the lipid bilayer allows only certain small nonpolar substances such as oxygen and carbon dioxide molecules to pass freely through it while selectively permitting ions and other polar molecules including water to pass through it with the aid of membrane proteins. The transport of these ions and molecules takes place either through passive transport or through active transport. In passive transport, substances require no metabolic energy to move across the membrane. Passive transport occurs either through diffusion or osmosis. In a cell membrane, we observe simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion. In simple diffusion, oxygen and carbon dioxide molecules freely move across the membrane from higher to lower concentration, whereas larger molecules, such as glucose, are transported by facilitated diffusion, in which carrier proteins in the membrane change their shape 
and accelerate the diffusion process. On the other hand, osmosis refers to the movement of water molecules across the cell membrane through diffusion. In active transport, transmembrane proteins act as pumps and utilize the energy from ATP to move substances against their concentration gradient, that is, from lower concentration to higher concentration. An example for this is the sodium potassium pump. Sometimes, glucose is also transported against the concentration gradient via active transport. The cell membrane, which helps in the transport of substances, is also a part of the cilia and flagella, hair like structures that project from the cell's surface. These structures emerge from centriole like structures called basal bodies and share a similar structure, though cilia are smaller than flagella. Their core, called the axoneme, is covered by the cell membrane and has numerous microtubules running parallel to its axis. Two microtubules join to form a doublet. If we observe a cross section of the axoneme, we will see nine pairs of radially arranged peripheral doublets and a pair of centrally located microtubules which are interconnected by a bridge. Such an arrangement of axonemal microtubules is known as the 9 plus 2 array. The central microtubules are enclosed by a central sheath, which is connected to one of the microtubules of each peripheral doublet by a radial spoke. The peripheral doublets too are interconnected by linkers called an interdoublet bridge. The cilia and flagella help the cell propel or move the fluid surrounding the cell. Thus, it helps in motility. Thus, cilia and flagella help cells in motility, while the cell membrane gives shape to the cell separates the intracellular components from the extracellular matrix and also plays an important role in the transport of substances across the cell.